Welcome to Conversations Live. For more than a decade, we've brought you the best in books, entertainment, and current events. When the movers and shakers of the world have something to say to you, they say it to us first. And now, celebrating 15 years of broadcasting, here's your host, Cyrus Webb. And welcome back, everyone, to Conversations Live. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Whether you're tuning in on the radio dial here in Mississippi at WYAD 94.1 FM, we welcome you all back to our show. Also, those tuning in through online affiliates around the world, including our Heart Radio family. We're glad to have all of you with us as well. We're excited to welcome author Karen Carbo to our program today. She's written a book that I know all of you will appreciate. It's called In Praise of Difficult Women, Life Lessons from 29 Heroines Who Dared to Break the Rules. We're going to talk to Karen not only about the definition of being difficult, but also what it was like for her to be inspired by these 29 women, and also what she hopes you're able to take away from the book as well. Karen, hello to you, and welcome to the program. Hi, Cyrus. Thanks for having me. Oh, Karen, I'm excited about this. I want to share the definition that you give of difficult women uh, in the introduction of the book. And you write this, a difficult woman, as I define her, is a person who believes in her needs, passions, and goals, or at least as important as those of everyone around her. That's just part of the definition that you give. And as I was reading the book, that definitely comes through, even though I think in society, unfortunately, Karen, people have different names uh, for, <laughs> for this other than being difficult. But what was it like for you to not only to think about the these women, but also to think about how they really were examples for all of us. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is, Cyrus, there's 29 women in the book, and each of them, um, they come from all walks of lives, but, um, and, and all names that are familiar to us, right. and, but they're all, quote-unquote, difficult in, in different ways. You know, I think, I think the title difficult, I mean, it's an actual word, obviously, that women get called when people, mm-hmm. um, I think when they inconvenience people too much, but it's also kind right. of a wink. You know, it's, it's if you're too smart or too stubborn or too determined or too ambitious, you risk getting called difficult. Um, right. But really, these women are, were all their own people. Um, you know, I think that, you know, another part of that definition is that they're not, they're more concerned with who they are than what the culture expects of them. Um, so, you know, I think that's something that, that I'm inspired by, uh, having grown up, you know, I, I had a mother who was sort of very interested in me towing the line and, and not upsetting people too much. And, um, you know, my hope for the readers is that, you know, if you just are sort of an inch more who you are, you will probably get called difficult, but you will be infinitely happier. Right. Right. There were three examples that came to mind as I was prepping for your segment, uh, Karen, and because of time, we won't be able to go too far into them, but but the three women that really struck me were Amelia Earhart that you mentioned in the book, Carrie Fisher, and of course, since it's, it's uh, Thursday, we have to mention Shonda Rhimes as well. I'll start with the, with Amelia, right. though, because I think, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, for Amelia, though, it was really, she was really in so many ways ahead of her time, right? I mean, what was it like for you to reflect on what she was able to accomplish, but also the skin that she was so comfortable in. Right. Well, Amelia was some was one of those. Um, Amelia and and um, Jane Goodall. Uh, well, you know, she was the heroine of my youth. I think many many little girls read about Amelia, and um, we, you know, she, she led a life. She she was actually not somebody who was. Uh, sort of overtly difficult. In fact, I think part of the reason why we know about her, there were many other women um, at the beginning of, of um, aviation who were flying, but Amelia was very charming. She was very well-bred. She was very polite. She was very generous. She also did a lot of social work, um, but she really walked to the beat of her own drummer. She was passionate about flying, um, and and she, that's what she was going to do, even long after people thought she should have gotten married and settled down and just stop with this nonsense. Um, so, you know, she was really somebody, uh, like I said, I think when we think of difficult women, we think of a woman who's, who's like standing in front of a crowd giving a speech. You know, we think of an extrovert. We think of somebody who's, who's maybe a little sassy. And Amelia was none of those things, but she just followed her passion, and everyone else sort of had to adjust around her. 
Right, for sure. That, I think that's a great uh, tie-in to Carrie Fisher in the book as well, uh, Karen, because I think, you know, even though, you know, as, you know, we all have gotten to know her as Princess Leia, but, you know, even just being comfortable with herself, even when, of course, in the world we live in with social media, people would have things to say, you know, not allowing those things to rattle her and to be able to embrace who she was and to realize that she was a person like all of us. I mean, how did examples like that encourage you? Well, you know, I think the thing is, Cyrus, you know, we, we know it's sort of hashtag time's up, right? Um, we've had sort of the call to action from, from women who are very visible. But, um, you know, all of us, men and women, but, you know, women, the book is speaking primarily to women, we all have to get up every morning and floss our teeth and walk forward you know, into our lives. And I think someone like Carrie, who, who seems so human, who seems so human to us, you know, she was this movie star, and she came from Hollywood royalty, and she was in one of the greatest blockbusters of all time, and yet she was very, very human. She had foibles. She, she you know, was sassy. She spoke her mind. She suffered. She laughed. You know, she was somebody that I think seems like somebody who we would know. So, you know, right. my hope for the book... And for myself, is that women will read this and they think, oh, you know what, I can do that. I can, I can kind of, you know, speak my mind here. I can, um, you know, I can kind of embrace this more authentic, difficult part of myself. So, um, you know, that Carrie in particular felt, felt that way to me as I was writing about her. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, you know, some of these women uh, were not standing in front of a crowd. One of the things you mentioned about Shonda Rhimes in the book, of course, is that amazing TED Talk that she gave, um, you know, Karen. You know, and, and as she says, you know, she has really owned Thursdays, and that's why I say it's appropriate for us to, to mention her, of course. I, I do think the other that's great right. thing about her is that she, yeah, is that she really has, has defied, I mean, what it means to be successful for so many people. She's been able to balance being a mother, um, then, of course, you know, running this amazing operation. And do you hope that women and men look at her and also think about that, too, to not allow other people to define what they can accomplish in life? Absolutely. And also, you know, she is sort of, I mean, she's a genius storyteller and, uh, you know, a very, very hard worker. And I think, she, you know, she will, if she owns Thursday night, I think, um, as I said in the book, she would also be perfectly happy to own Wednesday and Friday night. That, <laughs> that she, she, she just keeps on, you know, expanding and growing and, um, Again, she's not, I think, difficult as we tend to think of difficult women, only in that she keeps on. She's very happy to gobble up everything that she deserves, and that's quite a lot given how talented she is. Exactly. I think the other great thing about the individuals in this book, uh, Karen, is that they really show the importance of uh, who you associate with as well and that self-talk that is so important for all of us. Another thing that you also have benefited from. Again, everyone, uh, best-selling author Karen Carbo has been our guest. Her new book is In Praise of Difficult Women, Life Lessons from 29 Heroines Who Dare to Break the Rules. It's available through our friends at Amazon.com as well as through your favorite bookstore. Karen, we know it's been a busy day for you, so really appreciate the time and looking forward to our next conversation together. Thank you so much, Cyrus. It's really been wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we thank your audience for tuning in to another great segment of Conversations Live. If you all came in late and missed part of the conversation with Karen, don't worry. Thanks to our online friends, you all can catch the replay right after we go off the air. The link is already available through our social media sites. So head over to Facebook.com slash Cyrus Webb or go to Twitter.com slash Cyrus Webb. If you click on the link there, you can listen to the show completely for free and share with your friends from there, too. Until next time, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Make sure you take out time to enjoy some good music as well as a great book. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Live today. You will make it a great one.